Let's make a chuck wrench for the three jaw chuck that's on the American pacemaker. I don't have a wrench that came with the chuck or the lathe, so we're just gonna copy one of the ones I have. This is a chuck wrench that I use on the Monarch lathe for the four jaw. We're just gonna copy this design right here, except our square end, square drive, is gonna be 5 eighths to uh, fit that three jaw chuck. Got some inch and a quarter, uh, 1045 chrome plated steel, as well as some three quarter inch 1045 steel. I'm gonna use these two pieces right here to make this chuck wrench.
So there we have our finished up chuck wrench for our three jaw chuck that's mounted on the American pacemaker. Added the set screw there so that it would lock into the uh, handle portion. And of course we uh, milled the flat on there so that set screw would have a nice place to tighten down against and, and lock it in place. So this can be removed or if you need to, if you need a little extra leverage or something, you know, you can loosen that up, slide it down so that you have a little bit more pull. I don't think that's going to be the case here, but I just wanted the uh, set screw to uh, lock it nicely in there. Not sure how the fitment on the 5.8 square is going to be, but I did give this 5 thousandths clearance over uh, the caliper measurement that I that took on the square. So let's go down to the new shop and uh, test this thing and see if it actually works. All right, we made the trip down here to the new shop. So this is the three jaw chuck we're talking about that we just made this chuck wrench for. So let's give it a try. Look at that, perfect just like it was made for it. Try all three, make sure it fits. Yeah, that's pretty good. So as I said before, I gave this 5 thousandths clearance. Now that's measuring, I didn't come down here and do any precision measurements. I used calipers to measure that and it measured right on 625. So I made the square 620. So it actually could be just a little bit looser if you wanted to have a little easier drop in but I think this is going to wear in nicely right there so let's see how the chuck feels actually I probably could have shortened it up a little bit if this proves to be a little bit too high because of the height of the lathe here I can always cut this off and remachine this down a little bit but I'm sure I'll just get used to the length of the handle here anyway I think this is going to work pretty good I have no idea the make of this uh, chuck right here let me see if I there's a part number on the back or some kind of number stamped into it, maybe a serial number. But these uh, these top jaws, they actually were not mounted on there. And uh, Brian, the guy I bought the lathe from, he, he threw these in with the deal. I don't know if they, I don't think they're the, I don't know if they're the ones that came with it or not, but they do have that black oxide coating. So they could be the, they could be the jaws that came with it. I, I really don't know. It seems like it's a nice, beefy, heavy-duty three-jaw chuck, though. And it's moving nicely. I'm just giving it a, a see how it feels with the torque there. I think that's going to work good. All right. All right, successful chuck wrench for the, uh, the three-jaw here. That is awesome. So I still got to work on the four jaw chuck and I actually have one of my viewers who had reached out to me that offered to make a chuck wrench for the four jaw chuck. So uh, since he offered and wanted to do that as part of his contribution to the channel, I accepted his offer. So we're gonna have another chuck wrench coming very soon for the four jaw chuck. I'll be sure to show, show that to you whenever, uh, whenever it comes in. Uh, a couple more little things we'll talk about why while we're down here. I wanted to mention since we were sitting right here at the lathe, uh, I'm gonna be removing this phase two uh, tool post right there. This came with the lathe. I wanna add the multi-fix style tool post, which is what you see me use on my Monarch and Victor. That's what I wanna add to this machine right here. So I've been uh, contacting Peter Winlet over at Peewee Tools via email and told him I was interested in adding uh, that style, one of his uh, tool post systems to this lathe. So we're discussing that and it's gonna be the size D, which is two sizes larger than the ones that you see me use on the lathe down there. Uh, he bases that off of three things, the width of the compound, the measurement from the top of the top slide here to the center line of the axis, and also the horsepower of the machine. This motor is rated at 20 horsepower, so he says that um, I, need to, I need to go with the size D so that you have enough strength there uh, that's that's how he categorizes some of his tool posts there as a uh, horsepower. So anyway, I wanted to mention that. Um, I'm going to begin with him on adding that multi-fix style tool post to the lathe, and I'm excited to get that. It's probably going to be a little bit before I do, but when I do, I'm going to you know break those out and show it to you. We'll get it installed. I'll have to do some machining of a T-nut to properly mount the multi-fix style 
to the uh, compound here. In the previous video where we got the electrical hooked up here to the pacemaker, I showed that one of the issues we ran into was uh, these guys right here, which are the heaters for the uh, rapid motor. And Danny, my electrician, he's aware of this. The day that this was hooked up, he actually was not here. He, had, he was having his other guys in here getting everything hooked up. And you know that's when we discovered that this was causing a problem because these are not rated for the voltage, I believe, is what people are saying. And um, he's already got a plan to replace these. We just haven't got to it yet. By the, by the time you see this video, these should be replaced because I've got them coming back in to do uh, some more electrical work. And this was one of the jobs on the list. So this will be corrected. Uh, he had told me before he's either going to be replacing these and if he can't find these, then he's going to take this off and put a, put a new box on there with some uh, heaters in there needed to run the run this motor here. And the last thing I wanted to mention was that he's going to be adding a forward and reverse switch to the setup over here on the wall. What he was telling me, he's going to have a uh, transfer switch, kind of like you use for a, a you know a generator at the house. It's going to have a big switch like this, and you'll bas basically flip it one way for forward flip it the other way for reverse. So he's, he's gonna be mounting that up whenever he comes to work on the, uh, the pacemaker here, getting these heaters fixed. So I wanted to point that out. Whenever we went to install this, whenever this was going in, that particular day, I did not even think about having a reverse feature on the lathe. It just didn't cross my mind until this was going, this was getting done. And then some comments were brought up and then it, then it reminded me, yes, we need to have a reverse switch on the sleigh so that we can run in reverse. So that's his plan is putting a, um, a switch over here off to the side of the panel. All it does is just switch two of the legs on the three phase uh, power there. And then that will reverse the, uh, the motor when we hit the start switch. So lastly, I just want to mention that the next project in line for the pacemaker is the, uh, the pads for the leveling feet. I'm going to go ahead and start on that next. Uh, I think today I'm going to try to get started on them this evening. So we've got 12 total. We got four here, four in the center, four on the tailstock end. I've got plenty of those guys right there. I'm going to do a set up the, the uh, three jaw chuck and uh, face them off good, put a nice chamfer, and then we'll counter bore them in the mill for the adjustment screws down there. And that'll be the first thing we do is get it, get the get the lathe setting down on the on the pads and get it properly leveled. So I'm probably going to clean the ways really well during that process, get those cleaned off, and we will bring our precision levels down here and we will get the pacemaker leveled in. That'll be the, that'll be the first step on our goal to you guys seeing some chips made on this for the first time. All right, so I've got some other things I'm planning on doing now. You guys will probably see in this video, I'm gonna go get some new toolboxes. That's something I've been wanting to do, I've been kind of holding off, get some toolboxes in here. And I also wanna mention that we have begun the install of the Mr. Cool AC systems for the shop in here. Fernando's been helping me off and on whenever he has time. So we have been working on that and I'm looking forward to seeing those guys run for the first time. So that's the other project we've been working on for the new shop here as well. So I plan on having an install video dedicated to that system whenever we get that finished up. All right. It's gonna be new tool day here in the new shop. I've got a load of toolboxes here. I'm gonna get ready to unload. I'm gonna use the Gorbel jib crane there to help unload this. So let me show you what I just went and picked up. I went down to Harbor Freight and got me some of these US General toolboxes right here. We've got the 44 inch uh, roll around chest with the upper box. And then that guy right there is the 56 inch roll around cabinet. This Toolbox right here is my intended toolbox to use for hand tools. And you know, I got some power tools like some uh, DeWalt drill motors. Uh, so this is what I want this toolbox for. This is something that I've been uh, anxious to get in here is to get a toolbox set up so I can have some organized tools, not just uh, scattered around there on the table and on the floor. So we got that. And then so the 56 inch roll around chest, we'll walk around here so I think they got a picture of it. There's the, uh, there's the 44 inch right there. So the, the big boy, what I am planning on with this, oh, there's not a picture on it. I want this to be a toolbox that's gonna be used for the, the American pacemaker. 
I'll have it just wherever it needs to be. And this is gonna serve as like a uh, workbench top to set tool holders on. And then we'll have the drawers that we can start using to uh, get some turning tools and lathe tools well organized inside the drawers. And then of course, you know, you can move it around. But I tell you what, you know, I've been one of those people that for several years have looked at these toolboxes there uh, at Harbor Freight. And I know a few people that actually own these. And it seems like everybody that I know that has these boxes likes the quality and they seem to be of a very good quality. This is like one of those things that, you know, Harbor Freight doesn't have the best reputation on good quality tools. We all know it's, it's a stuff that's made in China. These boxes are made in China, but the, the quality that they put into these toolboxes is it's quite amazing how well of a product that you get for the amount of money. And when you compare these toolboxes to the ones that you go down to Lowe's and Home Depot and, and look at those boxes, such as a Craftsman or a Cobalt, um, those, those other brands that they sell, it, it seems like these are a better quality than those other ones there. And they're all made in China, you know? So this is what I went with right here. And that's what we're gonna be using in the shop. So I'm gonna start getting these guys unloaded and, and hopefully we'll be able to use our, our Gorbel there to easily get this thing picked up. I got some long straps. I'm planning on uh, looping a strap underneath there and uh, picking it up, setting it down here on the floor. That worked out nice. So this next one here, the, the bottom roller cabinet, I've just got that uh, one long strap that I can go all the way through there. I've got it straddling the center of the pallet here. And I think we're gonna be right near the upper limit of our height there for the jib crane. There we go, we got it. Same deal with the, uh, the big box right here. I've got the large strap straddling right through the center of the pallet and I'll just kind of keep it balanced with my hand and uh, 215 kilograms that's gonna be right around 475 pounds that we're lifting here I'm just checking it where I get off the trailer there <clears throat> oh yeah it's got it Move it over here. Oh, we're not gonna come on this side. We're gonna go to the other side. I'll set it down so I can control it and go over across the other side. I thought I had room out here on our reach. There we go, touchdown. So far, the uh, Gorbel jib crane and the, and the two-ton hoist there is working great. It's real easy to uh, move your, whatever you're lifting, move it around. I mean, it swings very nicely. You just have to do it very gently because um, whenever you have a bunch of weight hanging on, you go to push it, that beam's trying to, you know, the inertia is trying to continue going. So you have to stop it. So as long as you just do slow control movements, it works really good. I'm hoping that I can open these guys up and not find any surprises on uh, damage. All right, well, it looks like they pack it pretty nice. 
my main concern was pulling on the sides with the straps, but I felt like it was probably going to be strong enough to keep that from causing any damage. They got the corners wrapped nicely with some extra wood and styrofoam to keep them from getting damaged. And uh, so far it's looking good. I'm not seeing any dents on it. I think we've got a good straight toolbox. I got to get it picked up off the pallet right there. This is the best setup I got as far as length. And I'm going to try to straddle it in two places using my two longest straps there. going to be a little uneven because of the length of the strap. Isn't it nice having a jib crane? That is awesome. I think that worked out just fine. All right, let's take a look at this guy. See how it See how she looks under the under the skirt here. I don't see any damage. Everything's looking good so far. They always have such a nice glossy finish on their boxes, man. They look nice. We'll get the uh, keys out of the bag and open her up. Oh yeah, there we go. It's got the locking latches there to keep the drawers from uh, rolling out on you. Safety feature to keep the box from tipping over when you go to move it, if it's loaded down with tools. That's gonna be nice, man. Those, uh, the slides have a great feel to them. We got a lock on this side too. Nice. All right, this is probably gonna be the handle. That's what I was looking for there. You got the handles, you can bolt onto the end so you can roll it around. That's what the handles look like. Die cast. So it looks like we got a lineup pin on the outside and one bolt on each side of the handle there, it's bolted in. I'll go ahead and get those mounted on there. Not long enough. All right, well our 52 inch roller cabinet is complete. I'm happy with it. I think this is, uh, I think for what you get, for the money you spend on this, this is a good quality toolbox right here. It's gonna work really well. One of the things that I do have uh, a possible interest in doing, they do come with a nice rubber mat on top, but you've still got this uh, lip here so you can put the upper box on if you want. I may see about making a, a nice wood top for it. My friend John, uh, he's got a lot of uh, specialty woods and he might, I'm gonna ask him if he's got a slab Maybe they can uh, cut for me that I can buy from them to put up here to create a nice thick uh, wood top for this thing. Because uh, I don't know how much weight in the center. You know, if I push on it, I can see this moving a little bit. But my idea was having the top here to set uh, tool holders on for the lathe. And then, of course, we've got all of our drawers that I want to use to, um, you know, get some dividers in here get some of those plastic trays that I've seen some guys use and be able to have plenty of tool storage in here for stick tools, you know, all your lathe tools, and of course, separate all your carbide inserts, you know, all your normal stuff that everybody tries to do, keep organized. So that is awesome. So happy about that. So we're gonna go ahead and move on and start getting the, uh, the other two there unboxed and get those set up for our hand tools.
All right, we'll probably do that the same way. Uh, pick it up with the jib to get it up off the pallet there. But I'm just looking to see if it's dented or anything and it's not, it's looking good. Straps wrapped under, they got a little piece of wood in there. All right, let's take a peek under this one skirt. Make sure that don't have any damage. All the body lines look straight. That looks good. We are good to go. Got us a good toolbox here. All right. All right, last one. We got to just get our top box unboxed and get it set up on the top of this one here. Get it uncovered and see what it looks like. Oh, we got our first damage. Dang, that's a bummer. That side. That side looks like it was hit right here. Hmm. I might have to um, I might have to call and see if they've got another one and maybe just go ahead and replace this one right here. All right. Well, this certainly throws a wrench into my plan. It wasn't what I was uh, I was hoping I that I was going to be able to avoid this, but apparently not. So. I don't want to keep this because it's dented right there. Evidently, it got hit. I don't think it's damaged where it's not usable, but it's ugly. I bought a brand new box and I want it to look like it's supposed to be. I just got off the phone with both of our Harbor Freights in town. They do not have this one. This was the last black one in this size, the 44 inch. And uh, the best thing that they told me that I could do is bring it back tomorrow. They'll return it and they're gonna do an order. They're gonna actually order one and have it come in, but it's not gonna be here for probably two to three more weeks until this one actually gets in, which is, uh, I've been kind of waiting to, for this moment so I can get a toolbox and start putting my tools away, and now I've gotta wait again. But at least I got the lower box that I can start putting some of my tools over here away, and we'll just have to wait for the, for the top box here. They, um, they probably had a different color, but I didn't ask because I was just set on having the black toolbox here. So anyway, that's where we're at. I'm gonna go ahead and just box it right back up like I had it, and uh, I'm gonna go take it back tomorrow and uh, wait for the new one to come in. So this is why it pays to be kind to people. I talked to the manager at my local Harbor Freight, the one that's closer to me, and uh, she told me that she didn't see anything in stock there, the black color anyway. I was wanting to get another black one to replace the dented one. And so she said, just bring it in and I'll, I'll return it and do a pre-order. That way on the next truck, you'll have a box. So I showed up there this morning bright and early to exchange it or, you know, return it. And uh, she went to the back and looked and she actually had two of these back there. It's, it seems like their uh, Harbor Freight's inventory system doesn't show everything that they have as far as these toolboxes go and what colors are available. So they have to physically go back there and look and, and see what they have. So anyway, this looked out for me. Uh, I'm gonna open it up. Hopefully this one's not gonna have a dent in it, but if this one is dented, I'm gonna take it back because there's one more there. Um, so anyway, let's open this up and see if this one's dented. Hopefully it's not. I think we have a good box here. I don't see any dents on it. I think this one's gonna be good to go. All right, awesome. I'm gonna find the handles and get them bolted on. I'm, I'm thinking we can use the handles to probably just very easily pick this up and uh, set it onto the, uh, the, roller, the roller base.
the slow speed feature on this uh, two ton hoist is nice. We can just gently lower it right into place right there. There it is. That makes it nice. Perfect. All right. I'm excited to finally have an official nice new toolbox here in the shop. As I said, this is going to be this one is going to be primarily used for all of my hand tools and power tools. We'll put all of our drill motors in there and wrenches, screwdrivers, pliers, sockets, all that kind of stuff. That's what this box is going to be dedicated to. Okay, we've got our new toolbox in place. I'm real happy about this. Uh, officially have an actual toolbox that I can put hand tools and some power tools in there. And that's what this one's going to be for right here. So I've already started loading it up with some of my tools. And I've got plenty more that I need to buy and get in here. So I'll have a nice full range of hand tools to use around the shop. I do have a uh, new set of DeWalt tools, including the uh, ratchets and sockets. we got some wrenches here. Uh, these are some of the Allen key sets that I bought from uh, Harbor Freight to uh, have something going. We've got some DeWalt sockets right there. And then I'm going to have um, start getting some more screwdrivers and pliers. Um, you know, some adjustable wrenches go in there. And I uh, just got whatever I had in here, I've already started stacking in here. And I do have, I put started putting my DeWalt uh, drill motors in here. I've got a couple new ones for the shop here, but I had my ones from the other shop that I've been using. I just went ahead and put them all in here, but uh, a couple of these are gonna be going back home. Got the angle grinder in there. I've got a uh, circular saw too, but it actually won't fit. The drawers are not deep enough for this particular box, so I can't put the circular saw in there. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and start, you know, just collecting our tools that we need for the shop right here and get them all organized in, in this box and just uh, really happy to finally get that going. I've got all my slings right there. So one of the uh, organi organizing uh, uh, jobs that I need to do here is to, uh, you know, make some kind of uh, rack that I can hang all the straps and the chains on. Uh, so they're all uh, kind of in an organized uh, banner uh, whenever I get that done. So uh, one more look at the big box here, the uh, 55 inch. So as I said, this is going to be dedicated to use for the lathe right here. And I'm going to get with my friend John to see if he's got a nice big piece of wood that he can cut for me and make like a nice wood top on that for our tool holders to sit on and then be able to use this to start organize our, our cutting tools and, uh, you know, maybe some other things. We've got plenty of room in here for this box to do some storage with. All right, so that's it for now. I'll bring you back when I got some more uh, developments as we uh, continue to fill out the new shop here.